Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea, back here again for my rational perspective on Chelsea 2, Tottenham 1. How good it feels to say that scoreline uh, back again because we needed it. I needed it. I'm sure you needed it. It was a, a result that Chelsea desperately needed. For a number of reasons, Champions League qualification, uh, Lampard, uh, his belief, I'm sure his players' belief as a fan base, as a club, how we feel about this season. Because there is a danger, as there has been in previous years, that Chelsea are spiralling a bit into uh, a poor end to the season. And today was so essential for Chelsea to get back on track. And it was the perfect antidote to that um, sort of demoralising effect that we, we've had recently of feeling down about the club and feeling down about the team. But um, really a brilliant game, really brilliant result. I think that Frank, there's been a lot of criticism of Frank recently of his coaching style, of the uncertainty around what he wants this Chelsea side to be. Today doesn't answer all of those questions. Um, that's going to be a longer term thing, but I think you need to give credit where it's due for Frank Lampard as a coach, because not only on one occasion, not only on two occasions, on three occasions, Frank Lampard has gone up against Jose Mourinho and won. It's 3-0 now. And just on this season, he's done the, the the first Chelsea manager to do a league double over Spurs since Jose Mourinho in 2005-06. So that shows you um, that you know, that stat right there. I believe Frank Lampard is the first Premier League, uh, first English manager, I believe, to do a uh, Premier League double over Jose Mourinho in one season. That shows you something as well. Um, and all of Frank's big decisions came off. He absolutely scored Jose once again. It was a very different game to the one that took place in December. Chelsea were much more cool, calm and composed on that day. Today was much more of a game about fight, 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 fight. That was um, the feeling I took away from this game. It was scrappy. It was it was aggressive. At least that's the way I felt watching the game. I'm sure maybe people watching it at home had a different perspective. But you felt watching the game, it was a game of attrition. It was a game of mentality. And Frank Lampard uses the word fight a lot in his interviews. When he's speaking, he uses that term a lot. And that can be seen as quite a basic term, but it's very important, especially in games where you're up against teams of a similar quality to you. And it's what got Chelsea over the line today. It wasn't, you know, about Chelsea dominating Spurs in a lot of cases. Um, it was about Chelsea having that fight, having that aggressive, hunting impacts, making good challenges when needed, and being clinical, which is one thing we have lacked so much but finally today, it it was there. Chelsea didn't have a lot of chances. In truth, when you actually look at a reflection of the game, although there is a concern, I'm sure, from Spurs fans about the lack of chances they created, especially in that second half, Chelsea didn't have bundles of chances today compared to maybe Man United. But they took the chances they got, and that was because of some key decisions Frank made in terms of team selection. Uh, Olivier Giroud, um, probably man in the match, you could put it, give it to a lot of people, but just the impact of Olivier Giroud. Um, it was almost written for him to have a good game, not only because of his, you know, um, not being in the first team recently, that call for him to be in the first team, especially against Spurs, who he has history with, with Arsenal, but also because Spurs wanted him in a January transfer window. You could have seen him going there, and I'm sure Jose, without any strikers today, lacked a focal point for Spurs, and Giroud was absolutely that for Chelsea. On both goals, Giroud was brilliant. He really was. That first goal, that run in behind... Um, and just, you know, the way he finished that um, was absolutely amazing. You know, for a player who hasn't played a lot of football recently, that looked like a player who was playing every week. The confidence, the belief in Giroud, the, the assured nature of Giroud's performance just shows the class he has within his game, the experience and now he has with his, within his game. And Spurs couldn't handle him. And the second goal, I think, demonstrated his um, what he can give other than goals, which is so key for a striker at Chelsea. It's not just about scoring goals. It's that all-round play and linking with your fellow attackers and uh, that header that was just below me um, in the air to rotate and then to feed it into Mason Mount and then eventually got to Alonso. It was genius from Giroud and he deserves all the credit in the world. It's a big night for him personally. Um, I think as well, Marcus Alonso, a player who seems like a derby specialist. He isn't going to play a lot of games within the season for Chelsea, but if he does play two, it's going to be against Spurs. What a wicked strike um, into the bottom corner. Lloris, no chance. And it was such a well-worked goal from a, not, a lot of players. But I think Alonso, 
the stats about he's a great goal scorer for Chelsea. He really is in terms of his position. He, his goal rate is brilliant, especially in big derbies. He has got a knack for scoring in these games. And it does him the world of good. Another big decision Frank made, a player that is much maligned at Chelsea, who came in on a big day and performed. And, you know, he did have a few shaky moments. He still lacks that pace, but... He has that eye for a goal and he could have had two from a free kick as well. So you've got to give uh, Marcus Alonso credit there. He has got that within him and he proved it today at a key moment that won Chelsea the game. Another player, Ross Barkley, a player who, for me, you know, I, I was almost ready to give up on in a sense because I think that you just can't rely on Barkley in a 90-minute game. But this was probably his best performance in a Chelsea shirt in a lot of ways. Um, he almost sort of had an assist in the first goal, uh, hitting the post, um, but he definitely got the assist for the second uh, in the build-up to Alonso, laying it off to Alonso so perfectly. And Ross was everything you dream of uh, of him being. He was him at his best. And for me, it wasn't about, you know, he could have scored a wonder goal. It wasn't about his, you know, shooting at goal. It was about just the, the assured... Uh, nature of Ross Barkley today that just hasn't been present within his game at Chelsea and it's just a bit irritating I'm sure to Frank on the sidelines watching a performance like from from Ross today on a big day and think why can't you do that for me more often because so often I speak about Ross Barkley when you watch him on a football pitch you can see him thinking but not in a good way today that didn't happen that happened to other players at several points but it didn't happen to Ross Barkley it seemed like every time he got the ball he knew what he wanted to do with it and I actually think that was because of the formation the 3-4-3 three, three, which I predicted um which has worked wonders for Chelsea and will Frank Lampard utilize that formation again uh not only against Bayern but going forward because it maybe adds that defensive solidity that Chelsea need, but also it gives a license to players um, to, to verge forward and get involved with the attack who maybe aren't as stable behind them. Um, Mason Mount, I think, is another player. Mason Mount, once again, in a wider position, working wonders. And Frank, I think, was brilliant in his post-match interview to focus on Mount and say it needs attention. It does need attention. He looks revitalised against Man United. He looks even better today once starting and I still love him in this formation. I think he's an inverted winger. He has so much more freedom to dictate the game, to press. He loves pressing and in this formation he gets the most freedom and the most ability to do that. Not having to be in a midfield free. Um, he can run, he's raw, he's erratic. Um, but I think in this formation it really works for him. And he was all over the place, he really was, but in a good way. He was across the pitch, he was always pressing Spurs, always hounding to get the ball back, uh, winning fouls, um, helping to start attacks. And he had a key hand in the goal. And the second goal, amazingly, Olivier Giroud, Mason Mount, Ross Barkley and Marcus Alonso. Four players who didn't start on Monday but started in this game. And that is credit to Frank Lampard. Big decisions made and it paid off in a big way. Um, looking back, Kovacic and Jorginho. Kovacic is wonderful once again. He's getting back to the place he was before, maybe after a few shaky games. But he is uh, brilliant. He really is. And once again, uh, really flowing in that midfield. The stats around him, I'm sure if you're you know, a geek about stats, um, he had a really good day today and a really prosperous day, um, which is what to expect from Kovacic. He really has been a wonder to, to behold this year. And I think both him and Jorginho just worked really well. Um, both him and Jorginho. And Jorginho, that pass... In the first goal, uh, wonderful to behold. And Jorginho, I think, was had that impact creatively of, of getting that pass in, the pass before the pass, in a sense, with that goal, to, to let that first goal happen, to be the instrumental part of that, to break down Spurs' defence. A really classy move. But his uh, tackling, his aggressiveness, which I think was across the team and a lot of players, but I think Jorginho, so many times recovery tackles, going in for fouls, really squaring up to Tottenham players. I think it was brilliant to see and maybe you could have an accusation against Jorginho that maybe in the past he's been a bit lightweight. Today he wasn't that. He really was aggressive and really wanted to get his personality on the pitch and he did that. Um, only negative, of course, was the, the goal, which was deflected. It was a slight moment of, you know, Chelsea lapsing. Chelsea, it was interesting. It was a game that, Chelsea, although Jose very much as he does now in his big games, he goes to defend. But in truth, uh, Tottenham had a lot of the ball to try and get it forward and try and get back into the game. It was unfortunate that the goal was deflected. Caballero had a pretty good game. He made that brilliant save, I think, from a Sanchez header in the first half where he was retreating and it was going over his head, almost over his body when he saved it. Brilliant from Caballero. I didn't think he have had as much a transformative impact against um, Leicester or Man United, but he did today, which is brilliant for him, and I'm sure he'll keep his place now moving forward. What that means for Kepa, I'm sure, you know, that's uh, another question for another day. Um... 
But, you know, all around, I think, you know, Chelsea held on. It, it was very stressful on the ground. You could tell the stress within the ground once that goal went in. But Chelsea handled it well. They they handled the situation well. Just before we wrap up, of course, I have to talk about VAR, unfortunately, once again, and, and Premier League officiating because uh, Lacelso should have been off. Um, watching it in the ground, it didn't seem like much of a thing. But, of course, once we uh, walked out the ground, it became very evident that should have been a red card. Um, the only thing I can say about it is, you know, when I say, and, and when we complained as Chelsea fans, on Monday there was a lot of fans who maybe opposing fans or whatever say it's just being salty but today we've won a big game so I should be really ecstatic but once again Premier League officiating it's it's not even below standard it, it gets to you know I don't I don't like to go into hyperbole but it's it's embarrassing it really is um how poor Premier League officiating is they've admitted to it being a mistake but it's not good enough you know the official you know I can sympathize with Mike Oliver he you know probably had obstruction in his way not seeing that but this is why we brought in VAR um you know the, the people involved with VAR in Stockley Park in a darkened room where they're not obstructed with the hostility of the crowd the hostility of players they all their job is is to watch the game from multiple angles I don't know. Subjectivity for me is not a good enough excuse here. When in football was it okay to stamp on someone? That is a leg breaker. That could have cost Aspilicueta, concerning his age, the rest of his career. Um, I don't think that's uh, dramatising it at all. And just like Maguire the other night, this is much worse. And questions have to be asked of Premier League officials because no matter how many monitors we have, no matter how much technology we have, if the fundamentally if the officials um given the power to to see over that um the incompetent officiating we've seen before will just continue something needs to be done uh for sure and i think it, it's just below standard it really is and as frank said it's unacceptable really is but thank god officiating didn't uh, cause us any issues and we really got over the line and it's a massive win and i really hope now as frank uh, said in his post-match interview the fight the the courageous nature of our play really goes forward now and that needs to be the standard you know even if we're not playing free-flowing football the aggressive nature needs to be there uh, for Chelsea to get in the top four Sheffield United have just dropped points of course we have to see what Man United do tomorrow but it opens up a gap between us and Spurs which is great um, Bayern is Bayern is a bit of a free hit for me you know it is a bit of a pressure off game personally um, just going into that game but for the rest of the season now Chelsea have a chance now to really assert themselves once again in top four if Chelsea can do that it'd be a massive massive um, way to end the season if Chelsea can get top four it really would um, not only for financially for the club but for Frank Lampard in his first season all the ups and downs and the young players and, and the struggles he's had if he can get top four over the likes of Manchester United with you know all the money they've spent bringing in players and Jose Mourinho especially who just can't beat Frank Lampard it'd be massive for him um, so happy uh, we move on to Bayern, which uh, is a big game, but um, really happy about this game. It was a win we needed, and it was a win we got. So Tottenham Hotspur, it's happened again. Jose Mourinho saying he expected what Chelsea were going to do before the game. Well, he expected it and still lost. So there you go. Um, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know your thoughts on the victory and the game in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter, at Son of Chelsea, and I'll see you again. Mm -hmm.